Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first are a couple from Cavan, Canada, uh, Ontario, in memory of their son and daughter, and for the living and deceased members of their family. The second is an anonymous donor from Alberta, in memory of Carl Ilnicki, who died February 2012, Joan Jacob, who died April 2013 for the intentions of their family and in gratitude for the televised Mass. The third is an anonymous donor from Brantford, Ontario, in memory of her husband, who passed away April 13th, 2009, and in thanksgiving for her five grandchildren, that they may be blessed with good health. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pardon the offenses of your peoples, we pray, O Lord. And in your goodness, set us free from the bonds of the sins we have committed in our weaknesses. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In distress, Jeremiah raised his voice to the Lord. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my, per- my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Yes. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews took up stones to stone him. Jesus replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy. Because you, though only a human being, are making yourself God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your laws? I say, you are gods. If those to whom the word of God came were called gods, and the scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world is blasphemizing Uh, Because I said, I am God's son. If I am not doing the works of my father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I in the father. Then they tried to arrest Jesus again, but he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing earlier, and he remained there. Many came to Jesus, and they were saying, John performed no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true. And many believed in him there. The Gospel of the Lord. We are just ending the fifth week of Lent. And this week has been filled with drama. We have continued to prepare ourselves to be open to God's graces. We have continued to try to choose Lent to act Lent in a very concrete ways. We are called to examine our patterns and realigning our priorities. Our hearts are being renewed every day as we experience God's reconciling love and beg for the gift of healing. As all of this is wonderfully supported by the drama of this week's daily liturgies. We began with the rising of Lazarus on Sunday. During the week, we've had powerful stories about the accusations against Susanna, a healing image lifted up in the desert, the three faithful witnesses who survived the furnace, the account of God's covenant with Abram, Jeremiah's fearful trust in the midst of the plot against him, and Ezekiel's incredible vision of restoration of the nation, that God will make a new and everlasting covenant. Each of these readings is matched with the Gospel of John. We hear about the witnesses and testimonies and judgment about his being lifted up on the cross and in glory, about the freedom, liberation he has come to bring, about himself as the fulfillment of God's covenant, the new and everlasting covenant. And we can feel the opposition rising against him. And we can grow in devotion and grace 
and we realize that it is all for the love of the church. Which means Jesus' suffering was done for each one of us. Next week, we enter into Holy, Holy Week, Holy Forever by the self surrendering love of Jesus for all of us. All week, we are reminded of how He loved us. Whatever we do next week, no matter how busy or distracted we might be, we can let the power of Holy Week be in the background of our daily reflections. Our Lord entered into our life with its profound joys and its punishing evils, that we might never experience those struggles alone. So no matter what we experience next week, we can let it become a holy week, letting it all be touched by the graces of the week. From the humble yet triumphant entry into Jerusalem to our standing together at the foot of the cross, this can be a week which helps us bring all the elements of our lives, all of our experiences of sin and death into the font of his redeeming, liberating death resurrection. Next week is Holy Week. And let the holiness of the season be upon you and your families. And now let us stand as we pray. We pray for our Holy Father, our bishops, especially Bishop Bill McGratton, the new bishop of Peterborough, and all the priests and religious brothers and sisters, that they may be faithful in their call to fidelity and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Christians everywhere during Holy Week, that the scriptures and our prayers will make us more like Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in all parts of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for those living with heavy crosses to bear, for those who are sick and suffering, especially those in our own families, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for our loved ones who have died, that they may hear the voice of Jesus awaking them to the fullness of life. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear our prayers that we ask through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of his water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who holds himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve ever fiddling at your altars and there be saved by constant participation. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, and Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the, auth- and the auth- author of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. And through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And yet never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblations of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Basil, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through whom Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer that peace to each other. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for courage? Grant me, O Lord, the strength to be who I must be, to do what I must do. Give me the courage to stand strong against my fears and have the will to express my feelings and needs. Help me realize that I have the power to change, no matter what anyone tells me, because of you. Give me the faith I need to believe in you always, even when it seems you're not there. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received, never leave us, O Lord. And may it always drive far from us all that, you, that would do us harm. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for the people. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your friends who seek the grace of your protection may be freed from every evil and serve you in peace of mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Our thanks to three donors. The first are a couple from Caban, Ontario. The second, an anonymous donor from Alberta. And the third, an anonymous donor from Brantford, Ontario. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. Our office hours are Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time.